friends happy Hello. monday so this monday actually didn't suck right yes guys last week it definitely didn't suck last week was crazy it worked so much in the fact that come thursday my boss is like you know what tomorrow's good friday let's just not come to work your like, boss was done there was so much bs in my office last week and it's not it's not anything between me and my boss it's just Things went down and we were done. <laughs> we were done. My boss is just sometimes like, shit goes sideways. There's not much you could do. Right. It, that, I get that. Exactly. Get that. Uh, Drew was asking about the Battle Cat video. Isn't that badass? That was at Tampa Bay Comic Con last year. They That's, also had the um, the Skeletor. Oh, they had pan the Panther. Panthar. The Panther. Panther. Yeah. yeah. So they have two of them, and they travel around at the cons a lot too. But to 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 get to use the sword, you you had to get on Battle Cat. I mean, that yeah. Just, yeah. No, the, he gave me the option of which one I wanted oh, to really? get on. Yeah. And I said, well, my heart goes to the Panther. Did they have Skeletor Scepter? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. And so I was like, my heart goes to that. But I, and you were still at your table because yeah. you were working. So I was like, but Tim would really, really, really uh, find it incredibly thank sexy God my if I got on Battle Cat. So I was making a thirst trap for you. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Did it work? Did it work? Yeah. All perfectly. Right. Great. Thank God my brother was there at the convention to do some filming. Yes. Since, since which I was, was awkward for yeah. me, but you know, yeah. Randy was cool with it. And yeah. so, <laughs> right. Shout how out was, to the brother. Yeah. How is it like filming with another man? It's weird. Well, so Randy's <laughs> like nine feet tall. Yeah. You know, you're taller than me, but Randy's like super tall. And so, and he's. I call he's, him my big little brother. He's a police officer. Yeah. So he's very muscular. And so I'm like, behind i felt very protected yeah. i felt very safe with randy like right. he was in front of me and he was walking i can't see shit around him yeah but i was safe as hell no, my, so. brother, <laughs> my brother was built to be a police officer for sure um but yeah drew they're doing uh i'm pretty sure they're still doing the he concert. tours around so he might be at MegaCon. he might be at megacon because he was at megacon too but i had already seen him at the regardless show, yeah. drew i suggest i suggest you go to megacon regardless like i don't know if you have much uh con experience you should go check out but MegaCon. that's the one to go to for real um anyway yeah so monday feeling good except for my arm and my ribs are so incredibly sore and I hurt them in the nerdiest way possible. <laughs> I hurt them in the nerdiest way possible. How, how'd you, how'd you, first of all, I can tell that you're 40 because you did this. I spent the weekend putting away comic books. And hold on before you're like, <laughs> my buddy Todd is in, is in the chat. My buddy Todd has helped move my comic book boxes before. Right. Back in, in, we're talking like almost, we're talking about almost long, 20 years we're ago. We're talking about long boxes for comic books. Long so boxes. They're, they're like, what, two and a half feet yeah, long or yeah. something like that. Each box, when it's full, weighs about 40 pounds, okay? And I, I feel I have, like it's more like 50 I, pounds. I have four shelves high full of comic boxes. And you get up on those higher shelves and you're constantly pulling, pulling them in and out. 40 pound boxes. I... You know, and I did that maybe a few dozen maybe times. Maybe like twice. Maybe a few dozen <laughs> times. And uh, so this, this motion reported repeatedly with 40 pound weights, uh, it took its toll. It took its toll, right? It's amazing. Um, yeah. See? Thank they you. Are Thank stupid you. Stupid heavy. Todd has helped me for 20 years move comic boxes. Yes. Okay. Well, that, you know, back in the day when Todd would help us move, he had moved, helped us move like 15, 10, 15 of them. <laughs> there are 35 boxes now currently. Right. So we hired somebody to help us move because, damn, right. I'm not doing that. We're going to die in this See, house okay. because I am never moving those boxes. We, again. we are not alone today. Okay. My buddy Chris. Hurt his back doing the dishes. There you go. Okay. See? Look, but look, Drew sneezed wrong. <laughs> I had to be a hell of a sneeze. Okay. By the way, uh, Drew in the moment is his YouTube. Yes. Go check it out. And my buddy Chris Lafleur uh, does. Uh, he's on Twitch under the name Call Me Lafleur. His last name here. Go check him out as well. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. So let's see here. Oh yeah, sneezing wrong. I mean, I feel like I feel like I've dislocated a rib from just, This has just become a bitch. It's, it's just what it's like to be. Welcome to the old man stream tonight. 
This is the 40 plus stream. Uh, if you're not 40 plus, please exit. If you don't have a bottle of ibuprofen in every room of the house, you need to go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not part of your morning vitamins, if you take you don't a couple put ibuprofen. Two ibuprofen in with your morning vitamins. You're not here yet. Right. You're not here yet. So we got something in the mail. Now, last week, let's do a little backstory here. Okay. Last week, we opened some Nooligans, or a yes. fresh pack of Nooligans, right? The the Batman. The Batman. Themed. It was the it was the Batman Rogue Villains themed pack. And we only got one villain in our pack, though. Which, I wasn't it disappointed was... with the pack. I was just expecting more. more. Yes. Totally. Yes. Now, I knew for a fact, based on the uh, Facebook group, uh, the Nooligan card Facebook group that there was a poison ivy in the pack. And I'm like, Gretchen, I'm not saying you're going to get it. Don't get your hopes up, but there's one out there. Well, we did not get the poison ivy. We didn't. I haven't even seen it. I. She has no idea what it looks like, but guess what? I got on the trading group and we got one. Okay. I had to trade my Dr. Strange uh, sketch card that we unpackaged maybe two packs ago. Uh, it was one that the trader, Erica, Erica traded me last time too. She's been a lifesaver. Uh, she needed this card. Last time we traded with Erica, she, we had her black canary green lantern. Remember that? That's right. And that was her commission piece. That was her commission yes. piece that got made into a card. And she's like, hey, do you mind trading? And so she traded us the Bride of Frankenstein. Yes. Which is framed and hanging in the living room. Yes. yes. So now she made a trade today and I made a bonus trade for you as well. Oh, I'm so excited. She's like, hey, she might like this. Are you interested? And I was like, yup, let me go and dig up something you might want. And so she made the trade. Are you ready? I'm so excited. Right. I'm so excited. I haven't seen it. Um, I don't even know what these guys look like. Uh, <laughs> also, I did it once picking up a two pound Christmas present. Todd, Todd. Two pound Christmas present? That would uh, have been something good. Pulled, oh, and pulled a muscle crochet. <laughs> That is possibly, I mean, besides sneezing, I, I mean, picking up two pound package. I, these are all on the same level, I think. I have, um, I had hairline fractures in my, in my forearms from rolling out pie crusts. That's true. I, That's true. A few years ago, That's I had true. to make like hundreds of pies. Uh, ice, booze, Bengay, and pills. Ben that sounds like <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> well... His channel is called The Breakfast of Champions, by the way. Ice, so, booze, Bengay, and, and pills? Yes. Well, mine are vitamins and ibuprofen, but right? yeah, that tech counts. Right. Aggressive crochet technique. I mean, I've seen, I That's, think I think Anne could go pretty ham on some crochet technique. You know what? If anybody I know can do aggressive crochet, <laughs> it's Anne. Malik Adventures, hello. hello. Thank you for being here. I'm being very gentle. Yes, don't cut into the cards, I dear. I will not cut into the cards. But once again, Erica, uh, I'm gonna Erica. I'm gonna send this to you. Thank you so much for your trades. You have been a lifesaver. Okay, all right, I'm excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm so excited. Because once again, there's a card in here that you don't know about. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm just. I'm so excited. Let's do it. I can't. I can't. Let's, okay. do it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Hold on. Let me do it. Let, okay. let okay. me do okay. it. Let me do it. Okay. I'm okay. so excited. Okay. I'm so excited. I can't even okay. myself right now. Okay. 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 All right. <gasps> this is the, this is the rogues. Oh. This is the rogues gallery I can't one. can't handle it anymore. All right. This is the Batman pack one that we had. Oh! <sighs> there it is. Oh my God, she's gorgeous. That is really cool. It's like a cross between old school Betty Boop and Bruce Tim Poison Ivy. Oh, I totally see that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. that's. Now you ready to see the other one? This one's a double sided one. This is a double sided one, kind of like our our Mickey Mouse back here. Okay. 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 Ready? Yeah. Oh shit, that's cool. Look at that one. What? They made two? Yeah. <sighs> and then on the flip side is kind of the sketch of it. Oh, that's so gorgeous. And then the final piece. I can't even. There you go. I can't. My heart hurts too much. That's sexy. That is so beautiful. There you go. Oh, thank you. I think I think this one is 
Yeah, they're they're both rare cards. So there you go. I traded good stuff. Okay. You did, and you got phenomenal things. She's, Anybody who knows me knows that Poison Ivy is my one. She saw one what I was trading her, out. So. She saw what I was trading out, but not what was coming in. So I knew you had Poison Ivy. Yes. But I didn't know what she looked like. Um, I didn't do any research on it. I purposely didn't because I was hoping that I was going to get to have one surprised here. So yes. this is amazing. Very cool. You're I welcome. love it so much. Yes. These are gonna. These are get. These are. I. These gotta go in frames right now. Yes, that absolutely. Right now. That's amazing. Buddy Brian, hello, friend. Thank you for oh, being man. here. Newligan is. I think we have more Newligan artwork in the house than anything. We now. do. Um, for those who don't know what Newligans is, it's kind of like um trading cards, baseball cards, that kind of thing. There's yeah. an artist named Newligan. Newligan. It's like Hananu. Hananu Hanenu yeah. Solke. But he goes by a Newligan, yeah. and he makes these little five by seven cards and he shuffles them up and there he puts them prints. in a pack. They're art prints. And you, you it's a subscription list, which congrats to Swan, finally got off the wait list. Yes. And the subscription yes. List. There is a very long wait list. I promise it is totally worth it. But the cool thing about these is they're kind of like baseball cards. So you can trade them and they have sets and collections and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we open them every month here on our YouTube channel. So if you don't know about that, go check out the Nooligans. They're yeah. really, really cool. His artwork is phenomenal. Okay. Okay, this guys. Is what are here for. So look, look. Here it is. We okay. have not opened it. It is still sealed. We don't know what is in this box. Uh, I think last time, what was it from the Norwegian countries? And not my favorite. Not my favorite. I think you found more pleasure out of it than I did. Um, I can't remember. Scandinavia, maybe. Maybe I remember it wasn't awesome. Yeah. I well, you you liked it, but then we had to oh, like. Oh no, the last was Paris, France, and we were oh, surprised at how not good it that's was. That's right, it was France. Because we had the option, because of, you know, originally it was supposed to be It was supposed Russia. to be Russia, but with all of Russia BS going on. They gave us the option to pick a different country, so yeah. we, we picked a different country. And, um, and yeah, that was surprisingly not good. I was just, I was expecting way more out of France than I right. actually got. Right. So. All right, let's find out what country we're going to. Oh! Uh, Wait, what? We got France again? We got France again? You know what? No. Nope. Nope. We're not doing this. We'll okay. give it, we'll give it away to, to a, our friend of ours or something like that. We have another box over we here. We do, actually. We're not, I guess. I feel like we literally just did France. That, that sucks time. that they would give it to us again. Okay. That's okay. That's okay, because check it out. Bam! We got two. What's yeah. wrong with us? This you is know, we're always a month behind, and I'm glad I'm glad we were this time. So I guess we just get bonus snacks. Yeah. We don't want to do the same one no. twice. That's lame. All right, this better be good. <laughs> Todd, Todd only shows up for the misery. Todd only shows up for the pain to watch us suffer through things. <laughs> right? Okay, you ready? Hello, brother. Thank you for being here. We hey, were, Randy, I was just talking about you. We were just talking about uh, Tampa Bay Comic Con. 14 foot self. Yes. Oh, I'm getting lots of comments on my shirt. Thank you. This came out of Geek Box. Out of a Geek, Geek Fuel, Fuel Box. Yeah. yeah. So this came out, and then I always modify everything because I don't like collars. Yeah. They upset me. <laughs> All right. Let's see what All this right. one's from. All right. We're, okay. We're going to try this one more time. Yeah. Ready? Yep. Israel. Israel. Interesting. Okay. That's exciting. Tel Aviv. The... The city boasts the third most sushi eateries per capita in any major city in the world beside, behind Tokyo and New York City. Interesting. Let's see here. Nazareth, hailed as the city of Jesus' birth. It's also the birthplace of the white chocolate bar that is in this box. Ooh. They, it gave birth to the white chocolate bar? Yes. Okay. And then the Negev Desert, compromising over... 50, comprising over 50% of Israel's area, the desert boasts the largest crater formed by, not formed by a meteor or volcano. Rather, it was formed by erosion. Interesting. Crazy. Okay. All right. So I got, I got, I got a little trivia. You got some question. trivia? I just have one. Oh. One right now, and then I'll, I'll read more. Okay. This is exciting because I love this movie. But in Israel... Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was renamed. Was it A, 
it's raining falafel. Oh my god. B, shawarma storm. This has got to be. Why does it sound racist? C, hummus clouds are coming. This is awful. Or D, shish kebabs from the sky. Well, they all come from Israel. That just sounds racist. It's not. So is it A, it's raining falafel, B, shawarma storm, C, hummus clouds are coming, <laughs> or D, shish kebabs from the sky? Please. Shish, 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 shish. I'm saying shish. Um, I'm gonna, God, I just, uh, let's, let's say, uh, uh, what was, you got falafel? It's you, raining falafel. <laughs> Shwarma storm. I'm gonna say shwarma storm. Shwarma storm. Anne says C. What is C? Anne says C. Hummus clouds are coming. Hummus clouds are coming. Is it hummus or hummus? That's, I don't know. I've mean, heard it said it's, many it's, different ways. We in no way want to insult the people of Israel with us butchering your language. I'm gonna say so. I'm gonna say shwarma. Anne says hummus. Okay. All right. Shall I tell yeah, you? Yeah, go for it. All right. The answer is A. It's raining falafel. U.S. films are often renamed in Israel for one of two reasons, because there's no great Hebrew translation or because the movie can be better marketed to the locals with a different name. As is the case with raining with it's as it as is the case with its raining falafel. More examples include Frozen, which was renamed Breaking the Ice, Despicable Me Too, which was renamed Crazy About the Minions and The Hangover, which was renamed Stopping in Vegas on the Way to a Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst title ever. That is that is a poorly described plot. That's what that yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. All right. So let's dig into Israel. Good job, Chris, by the way. Raining falafel. Ooh, Apollo. Listen, you know what? Speaking of raining falafel, we play, we have an echo dot in our in our front office that uh, we listen to 80s on eight. From Sirius XM nice. in the office. Nice. And I kept myself singing along until today, actually, got to the point where I'm singing Raining Men. It's, it's raining, raining men! And I'm like, uh, okay. Please, Martha Wash is a goddess and yeah, you know it. I know. You were down. I know. You're like, cold into our sources. Okay. What do we got? The street's the place to go. All right. What is this? Because tonight for the first time. Salted corn cones. All right, let's go back to it. Is, Apollo! Israel's lighter, airier, airier? It says airier. Airier. Version of bugles. Oh, I like bugles. Take a bite of this yum. How could you, how would you describe it? Light, crispy, or maybe your first thought is just plain or even dull? If, oh, that's a great <laughs> way to, This might suck. If that's you, you'll be surprised to know that these cones, corn snacks, Cone snacks. Cone snacks. Are a wildly popular party snack in Israel, second only to bomba. Ooh. It has to do with the shape. And not because you put them on your fingers like little party hats. These cones were designed for dipping local dipping. Locals scoop everything from chickpea based hummus. Okay. To, I like dipping stuff. To eggplant based baba ganoush. Baba ganoush! To tomato paste mat matbuka. What are you doing with your hand? Um, uh, are you summoning your power? I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, or even the sweet options like peanut butter and Nutella. So feel free to munch these as is or grab your favorite dip. It's always about the dips with these things. They never send us any damn dips. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I need to dip. It needs flavor. Yeah. It's nothing. It's not even salted. It's nothing. Bugles it's, are better, man. It's funny because it seems like the bugle-inspired snacks are popular in the Yum Box, right? But I don't consider bugles are popular here. I don't care for bugles. I period. love them. I haven't had them in years. I only have them when I open them in a, a Universal yeah. Yum Box. So, okay. So, I think I preferred bugles when I was a kid, too. Like, but... I don't care for them, right? I don't actually go, ooh, you know what I haven't had? These remind me of, remember those chips? <laughs> Look like Freddy Krueger when you put them all on your fingers. They, um, you remember those chips called munchos? <laughs> That's what they remind me of, munchos. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> 
I'm a huge dipper. <laughs> I like big bowls of dips. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying before? I don't know. It was probably inappropriate. I got I got distracted by Chris's huge dipper. Sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't have words to say. Yep. We're gonna move along. Um not impressive. So they kind of taste like bugles or like the muncho chips. They're very lightly salted. They're very crunchy, and I think they would be good with like a dip for sure. Yes. But not a lot going there's on. There's not a lot of flavor in that. Like if we're supposed to eat that by itself, it needs to be like, I don't know. We're from America, so everything needs to be ranch dressing flavored. So there's literally Four ingredients or five ingredients. Well, that's good. Corn flour, palm oil, okay, salt, yeah, sugar, yeah, and a leavening agent. So yeah, like I, it, it, so, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what though? I like that because the less ingredients means you're not putting a bunch of weird stuff. In I mean, body, yeah, so. it's not. Yeah. I, I mean, it. you know, I like me some palm oil. Mm. Mm. Okay. Which of these businesses failed to survive in Israel? Was it Burger King? McDonald's, Starbucks, or Pizza Hut? Which business failed to spread in Israel? Burger King, McDonald's, Starbucks, or Pizza Hut? What do you think? Failed to spread in Israel. Uh -huh. So like, it, it, it never caught on. Like, it th there was on. one there maybe, but it, it never, well. like the franchise didn't pick up. Um... I have high hopes for this Israel box, so I'm going to say that Starbucks has failed the spread in Israel. Okay. Mo says Starbucks. <laughs> Finally, the People's <laughs> Champ. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for coming back, People's Champ. Yeah! I want to be a hype man when I blessing go. blessing us with your presence today. People's Champ in the house! <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm just matching energies. Burger King, because who likes that? Okay. Yeah, that's true. Burger King is gross. So we got, you said Starbucks. I said Mo Starbucks. says Starbucks. Yes. Uh, Brian says Burger King. Okay. Let me wait one more second. Let's see here. Uh, Todd also Todd says, says Starbucks. Todd says Starbucks. He's the smartest man I know. Chris so says I Burger King. If Todd agrees with me, then I'm right. Um, let's see here. <laughs> okay. All right. The answer is Starbucks. Yay! I knew I liked You Israel. won't be ordering any grande frappuccinos in Israel. Nope. Despite massive worldwide success, Starbucks failed to take off in Israel due to stiff competition from established Israel coffee shops. Meanwhile, McDonald's was met with open arms and is now the most widespread restaurant in Israel. M McDonald's was met with open arms. Now I'm singing Journeys. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's over 180 McDonald's in Israel and 50 of them are kosher. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I like that. That's, okay. That's that's informative, Tim. Did you show off our little sticker that came with it? I did not show our sticker off. I'm sorry. Yeah. Look at that cat. The camel sticking his tongue out. <laughs> he's a, he's a little slow. <laughs> he's, a little, he's special. You yeah. leave him alone. All right. He's adorable. All right. What do we got next? All right. We've got bomba, bomba. Okay. peanut butter puffs so these look like the, peanut butter cheetos the bomba was just mentioned in this uh in the salted that corn is cones is this for a baby is this baby food this looks like things that they give little babies don't they give little babies like little cheeto things to chew on i don't know i'm not around little ones very often bomba peanut puffs Israel's most famous peanut puff. Like there's a lot of pee. Like it would be it'd be like saying America's most famous peanut puff because nobody knows <laughs> there's a there's peanut there's right. peanut puff in America. Yeah. Okay, All right. so they look like little this peanuts. yum is a scientific breakthrough. For years, researchers noted that a shockingly low number of Israeli children have peanut allergies and no one knew why. Until 2008, that is, when scientists realized that it's because of Bamba. Over 90% of Israeli families buy these peanut puffs for their households. And as for it, babies to eat. As it turns out, the early exposure to peanuts reduces children's risk of developing an allergy, peanut allergy, by 81%. Uh, let's be clear, this yum won't cure existing peanut allergies. 
So definitely don't eat these if you're allergic. But with their peanut flavor, uh, peanut butter flavor and airy crunch, they're 100% effective for a rumbly stomach. Interesting. Am so I these are both? like, yeah. Okay. So these are like snake oil. They, they, peanut they, 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 yeah, they, they smell just like peanut butter. Okay. I mean, I appreciate the science behind that. Yeah. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Oh, shit. Wow. So. They took all of the moisture out of my mouth. So. Like a sponge. <clears throat> so it's like I put a um, moisture vacuum in my mouth. Oh, my God. It's like I put a moisture vacuum in my mouth. And at the same time. I resisted just right before I sucked my soul out. <laughs> wow. I'm going to try another one. <clears throat> Man. So it instantly dissolves in your mouth. It, it instantly so, dissolves down into like this semi-solid wad. We've all had the cheese puffs that come in like the big tub, the big barrel. These are not cheese balls. They're, they're not cheese, puffs. but they're that consistency. Right. But yeah. they're not they they they're not as crunchy. Crunchy, yes. They they're like a weird styrofoam that just dissolves into this wad. Yeah. But to give it a, 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 a like a similar texture, it is that airy kind of cheese puff sort of cheese ball sort of consistency until it touches the moisture, and then it just shrinks right up. Like you can hear you chew for half a second and then nothing. Well, you got a little bit more out of that one. I can't decide what I think about I know. these. They're weird. So, you know, they look like a cheese puff, but they're peanut butter. Semi-solid wad is my new punk band coming out on, uh, what's the new music thing that everybody likes to play? Spotify. On, on Spotify. That's not the, that's what I was talking about. What are you talking about? Oh, what are those rappers that show up? SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's my new SoundCloud is... Um, are we going to tattoo your face? Semi-solid wad. <laughs> are, are you the new Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah, that's me. I'm going to I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, whatever he's doing, I'm going to do mm -hmm. that. Shrinkage is real. <laughs> it's not a myth. <laughs> <laughs> these, um, these are... They're, that's such a great... It is a great band name. I, I'm guessing they're like the elixir of life over there, but I find that I would not go... Ooh, Bamba. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like I'm eating baby's foods, like how it's got no actual flavor. There's no salt. There's no, like, enhancements to it. Yeah. That paired with the fact that there's a baby on the freaking bag, it might as well be the Gerber baby. I do have to appreciate how simple these products are, though. It's peanut butter, uh, which, is, which isn't really peanut butter. It's just ground peanuts. Uh, corn grits, sunflower oil, and salt. Well, and it's all, you know, it's it's like, all supernatural stuff. Yeah, I like that too. There's no like maltodextrin and stuff like that in there. All right. Who was once asked to be the president of Israel? <laughs> I feel like this is a bad joke. Who was once like At, invited asked. to be the president yes, of Israel? Yes. Okay. Was it Dwight D. Eisenhower? Okay. Albert Einstein? Marilyn Monroe? Or Martin Luther King Jr. Once asked to be the president of Israel, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Albert Einstein, Marilyn Monroe, or Martin Luther King Jr. The only one and, I think and she's looking here, but you can't see the answer. No, like, I can't see. Yeah. Um, I am going to guess Albert Einstein. Okay. Just because that one it makes the least amount of no sense. The least amount of no sense? Yes. So it makes the most sense. Yes. The least amount of no sense would make the most yes, sense. Yes, but none of those make any freaking sense. <laughs> okay. Todd says Einstein. Oh, uh, see, Todd and I are like, you and me, Todd. My mouth is still dry from those I, I still have Bomba in my teeth. I don't like it. I don't like right. Bomba in my teeth. Got three for Einstein. I feel like you guys are Googling this. I'm giving you too long to Google You're Googling. it. Googling. Todd probably knew. Todd knows everything. Well. Okay, I was just waiting to see if anybody else wanted to an answer. All right. The answer is Einstein. Yay! We yeah. are so smart. We are so smart.
smart. You almost had a totally different reason to remember this famous physicist. In 1952, Israel turned to Einstein, who was greatly admired by their first president, uh, to take the helm. Einstein gratefully replied that he was unqualified and turned down the role. Even no Nobel Prize winners have their limits. Well, there you go. I, you know, that's cool. Einstein was a was a super intelligent guy about certain things, and then not so much about other things. Well, as is with most super geniuses, they're very neurodivergent. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sure everybody's heard the story about like how he was like five before he knew how to tie a shoe or eight before he knew how to tie a shoe. Right. Or something like that's, you know, basic human things he was very underdeveloped on. But the higher functioning shit, he was like through the roof. So. All, All right. right. Let's try this thing. I want to try this one. All right. This is. Marshmallow. Fluffy marshmallow. All right. They call this uh strawberry and vanilla marshmallows man they don't they, they don't, are they don't they're get, as simple with their ingredients as they are their names man. i like what it I, I like it you know what you're freaking getting here like there's no surprises every mouth every every bite is a mouthful of fluffy flavor Ooh! pop a few of these super soft flavorful marshmallows in your mouth before reading on okay let's, okay. let's do that then do one of each color there's okay. uh, there's white ones and there's pink ones I like marshmallows. All right. I enjoy marshmallows. Okay. Simple little. They just look like marshmallows. Yeah. Now I want s'mores. Okay. Mmm. A very, a very melty texture. It These just, are delicious. They really kind of disappeared. Uh. All right. It says done. Perfect. Now listen to this. Oh man. Oh, they're like it was cyanide. <laughs> It's done perfect. You have 30 seconds. Marshmallows Marshmallows didn't exist until 34 years ago. I am older than marshmallows? <laughs> that can't be right. That can't be right. That can't be right. Marshmallows didn't exist, oh, in Israel until 34 years ago. Oh, there well, we go. they're behind the There we go. Uh, did you spit them out in shock? Wait, no, I ate them. Uh, wait till you hear this. This yum is made by Rashawn Lazion by was made in Rashan Lazion by Israel's largest confectionery called Carmet, the same company that introduced the marshmallow to Israel. Okay? Okay. We'll try once more. Israel, Israelis now eat more marshmallows per capita than Americans. Okay. Okay. Uh, if that didn't make you just spit it out, you're much more composed than we are. They are super hype on these marshmallows. They like, really are. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so simple enough, sugar, glucose syrup this time, water, cornstarch, fish gelatin. Fish gelatin. From tilapia, specifically, uh, and artificial flavors and red three. So a little bit more. I'm not familiar with fish gelatin. That's a new one for me. Fish gelatin. Usually we just use gelatin. Je jellied fish. And, jellied and tilapia. And regular gelatin is actually mm. technically a, mm. from beef. And so. I love tilapia. But enjoy your bottom feeder fish here. It's just like fish. No, these are delicious. They are nice strawberry flavor. Yeah. They're not too are chewy. Are the white ones no, they're vanilla, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're not too chewy. They're not too They really gummy. disappear. They disappear these are quickly. Really good. Yeah. Food. Yeah. These are a win. Fish gelatin and all. That would be that's a flex, Gretchen. I'm older than marshmallows in Israel. <laughs> Let me let me tell you something. Kids. I am. Let me tell you something, kids. You talk about your your cell phones and your internets. I'm older than cell phones. I'm older than marshmallows in Israel. Good job, Grandma. Good job, Grandma. That's that's from Auntie Gretchen to all of my nieces and nephews. Because yeah. they already think I'm old as hell anyway. Now they're I'm, like, oh my God, she's I'm, older than marshmallows in Israel. Oh my God. I'm loving how simply titled these are. Like there's no there's no gimmicks to them. They're like, look, they're, they're not giving this is you, what it is. They're not worried about giving you the old razzle dazzle. <laughs> now get off my lawn. <laughs> get off my lawn. Here's your strawberry marshmallows. My back hurts. My back hurts. Damn, kids. <laughs> All right, let's try something else. Ooh, this sounds oh. fun. I'm older than Google. Yes! That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm older than Google. 
older than Facebook. Yeah. I am go to the library and get out the encyclopedias old. Right. That's how old I am. All right, baby. Yeah. Dream pretzels. Honey mustard smash. Dream pretzels. I'm guessing they smash yeah. them for you. I don't think I have to smash them. I didn't realize this required work. Honey mustard and onion pretzel bites. Oh man, my breath is gonna be awesome with that. Sweet and savory punch with a perfect crunch. Hey, that's pretty good. In Israel, honey Ooh. never in, in Israel, honey Ooh. never honey never flows stronger than during Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Honey is said to ensure a sweet year ahead. I don't smell a damn like a honey. And locals here. take this very, very seriously. In the month before the holiday, the average Israeli consumes a whopping 40% of their annual intake of honey in that one month. Uh, the average Israeli consumes, uh, let's see here, 40% uh, via treats like honey cakes, honey cakes, baklava, honey drizzled apples. What are you reading? And of course, tea. I'm talking about none of that talks about pretzels. Listen to me. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Or in case <laughs> of this yum, that was a lot of bullshit to get through. Sweet and savory pretzel bites bursting with honey, mustard, and onion as well. Uh, we can't promise the sweeten your whole year, but the next few minutes are bound to be downright delicious. Okay, first of all, all I smell is vinegar and mustard. I, yeah. Do you smell honey in here? No. My bullshit meter's going off on this because this there's not a honey. They're, they they waxed poetic about honey, and these straight up smell like mustard and vinegar. <laughs> Reserving 30 minutes at the library to play Oregon Trail on an Apple IIe. Yes! <laughs> in 1984, they must have been confused on what the Stay Puff Marshmallow was. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right. I have a few because you have one big one. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. The smell and the taste are totally different. Totally different. These are amazing. I don't get the honey though. I don't, I don't get any honey. There is a light sweetness right when you first bite into it. But it doesn't taste like honey. It's just like a it's gonna taste like sugar. But the mustard <laughs> is not overpowering either. Not like the Snyder's honey mustard, where it's like straight mustard. Yeah. These are really good. They smell like ass, but they taste really <laughs> good. I think that's in the catchphrase. Ah, yes. Smash pretzels. They smell like ass, but they taste really good. It says it, right it says it right there. It says it right there. Yeah. Tastes like ass. Mm -hmm. Like sm ass. smells like ass. Smells like ass. Tastes good. It does smell bad. It smells very like... Here, try another one. Like old onion. Vinegar. It's... Just, it's yeah. Ugh. But there's a little sweetness right at the beginning. Just a light sweetness. Like a sweet onion taste. But not honey. I mean, if they had used onion... I mean, uh, honey in this as an, uh, like a background ingredient... To, whatever consistency consistency they needed fine but i would not have put it in they my... really wax poetic and thought a lot about the um the honey portion of this story and there's not really any honey here but they're good huh i like them okay smash puzzles smells like ass tastes good <laughs> that's your new tackle you all can have that <laughs> yeah my, i'll just charge you my consultation fee mm -hmm. All right. you know, I'm gonna be on a commercial in Israel and be like, "Smash, smash pretzels. Smells like ass. Tastes good." Which of the following? Here's another multiple choice. Okay. Which of the following is Israel's largest export? Okay. Is it diamonds, mm. honey, mm -hmm. <laughs> sapphires, or milk? Their biggest import. Diamonds. Export. I'm sorry. Export. That export. That makes a whole difference. Export. Diamonds. Honey, sapphires, or milk? I don't know a lot about jewelry, but I don't think I've ever really heard people talk about Israeli diamonds. Okay. I'm going to say honey. Okay. I'm going to say honey. Since they talked about it in such loving way, describing their mustard pretzels. What do you guys think? Is, is Anne there... says sapphires. Sapphires, milk. 
So we got Anne saying sapphires. Chris is over there chiming in with milk. Uh, Swan, Swan says, says milk. milk. Okay. All right. All right. Wait just a couple more seconds. How do you how do you export milk? I mean, what do you mean? Like, doesn't that stuff have to sit on ships? I guess they could fly. Unpasteurized. Oh, they, they, okay. Know. I don't know how it works. <clears throat> I you yeah, I might be a chef. I don't know what I'm talking. Yeah. About. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So their largest export between diamonds, honey, sapphires, and milk is a <clears throat> cut diamonds are Israel's largest export. Well, I'll be damned. Constituting 23.2 of Israel's total exports and a whopping 12% of the world's production. Interesting. That's a whole lot of bling for a country that's just about as big as the state of New Jersey. Well, obviously I've not bought diamonds in uh, ever, so. <laughs> I don't know. When, I mean, when you were buying my engagement ring 25 years did ago. Did I specifically say, you, is that an Israeli diamond? Excuse me, is that an Israeli? I mean, he was, it was more of like, this is how much money I have. What can I get? Right. <laughs> what are my options? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> this, is how, this is how much money I have. <laughs> Please give me one, one ring. And I have one diamond. <laughs> That's, that's exactly mm -hmm. how it happened. Mm -hmm. That was our diamond shopping experience right there. No, sir, I cannot afford the bandage. <laughs> tinfoil will be fine. Thank you. Your finest tinfoil, please. May I have your <laughs> finest tinfoil diamond? Because <laughs> I'm broke AF? <laughs> we were little babies. Okay, let's try something else. Let's see, let's see. What looks good? How about these things? Oh, okay. Oh, that looks like it's right up your alley. This looks like it's right up my alley. <clears throat> All right. Menomina. No. <laughs> They're called uh, Menomim. Menomim. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Menomim. <Do, do>, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Menomim lemon cream wafers. Okay. Zingy lemon cream. Zingy. In every crispy bite. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Universal Rub, Universal Rubs, Universal Yums is coming <laughs> up with some zingers. Don't freak out. But you're holding one of Israel's most controversial sweets. The controversy has nothing, has nothing to do with it being a wafer. In fact, these wafers are Israel's most popular sweet snack enjoyed alongside coffee, tea, and ice cream. Why are you saying it like Keenan Thompson? Get some ice cream. The controversy lies in the flavor. <laughs> most, is, most Israelis agree that the tastiness of the vanilla and chocolate cream wafer varieties, uh, but things get divisive with the lemon. Okay, lemon makes people crazy. It's like Israel's version of the pineapple on pizza debate. <gasps> so, listen, I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe on this debate. Do I say it belongs on pizza? No. Will I eat it on pizza? Yes. No. So, Not a lot as you taste the zingy cream slathering the crispy wafers on this yum, decide for yourself which side are you on. So, either I like it or it's terrible. There is no in between. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Hmm. No. Oh. Not bad. Not feeling it? I don't know that I would go and be like, ooh, give me some of that. Okay, no. I will agree. But some of you might recognize when I the say... The lemon is nice, though. Some of you might recognize when I say that this tastes like tricks. The cereal. Okay. The, the, the fruity-looking tricks. Yeah. This tastes like tricks. And I think I think a lot of you know what that flavor tastes like. That artificial fruit flavor. The artificial citrusy kind of flavor. Um, what's the one that was like orange O's and green O's? Fruit? Apple Jacks? Apple Jacks. How much is like Apple Jacks? Really? Apple Jacks? Mm-hmm. And which also probably tasted the same as Trips. Huh. Like all those series actually probably tasted exactly the same. Interesting. Swanee's mad now because the song's going to be stuck in her head all night. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I love Menomino, but next time you listen to it, imagine the main puppet is constipated. The main puppet being Menomino. Menomino. 
that he's constipated. Okay. Uh, I can't believe I put that in writing. <laughs> I love you. Hello, Dave. Thanks for being here. Okay. These are growing on me. Okay. I munched a little on this one while we were reading the comments. I mean, it tastes like tricks to me. It tastes like cereal. Dry cereal. It does taste like you're eating dry cereal. Yeah. But it's not as dry as dry cereal, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, no, no. Because it's got a creamy kind yeah. of texture to it. Yeah. These are yummy. Okay. Don't hate them. These would be great with vanilla ice cream or something like that. Okay. Mm hmm I'm not mad about these. Okay. Fair. I will eat these. Okay. Manam -manam. Now. Yeah, a big ass bag of them. Mm. All right. This uh, I'm gonna throw this out there and it might be a trick question for some people. The Dead Sea produces valuable multiple choice. The Dead Sea produces valuable asphalt. Okay. Pearls. Okay. Rubies. Okay. Or sponges. The Dead Sea the is dead a producer. Is a pro is a producer of valuable asphalt, pearls, rubies, or sponges. I'm gonna guess pearls. Okay. That's my guess. The Dead Sea. What what do you think it produces? We have pearls. So Chris says scrolls. Scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Chris. You, know, pearls, you entertain me. Pearls, uh, salt. See, I originally thought salt too, but it wasn't in the multiple choice. Yeah, tries. yeah, that would have that would have been like a perfect one on this list. Salt would have been. David the... says sponges. Uh -huh. I think Todd says sponges, but he might have been. He might have been calling in like I said pearls. Obviously, I missed a typo. In one <laughs> but then go to the one below. <laughs> <laughs> sponges. I love you, Todd. Todd makes my heart happy. The answer. Yep is asphalt the petroleum seeps of the dead sea floor are known to spit out asphalt sometimes you can spot massive black blocks of it floating to the surface believe it or not it's proven very valuable especially to ancient egyptians who paid top dollar for it asphalt. why asphalt anti asphalt's anti-decomposition properties are perfect for mummifying the dead interesting yeah they would use it as part of the embalming stuff i bet they do yeah interesting and so it would prevent decomposition see this is educational and entertaining asphalt is asphalt. the ancient formaldehyde asphalt is also what bomba is made out of because <laughs> this shit turns to asphalt in your mouth Spongies. Spongies. <laughs> yes Spongies. 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 <laughs> we type good. Splongles. Yeah, splongies. Splongles. Spl oh, splongles. Can't even read. Nice. You can't even read. That was interesting. I am entertained by that. All right, ready to try something else? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do let's do this thing. Oh, pronounce that. Pesky zoo man. <laughs> Peace. Pesek Zeman. Oh, believe it or not, this is a couple, that's a couple different words it's throwing together. Pesek Zeman. Pesek Zeman. Pesek Zeman. Listen, Pesek Zeman. <laughs> milk and white chocolate caramel wafer. Ooh. Is it, this might be the milk chocolate or the this, white chocolate. This, I mean, this is white chocolate. Israel's famous. That came to Florida, so it <laughs> might be a little gooey. Oh, they're, throw, they're throwing, uh, they're, they got shots here. Uh, Shots fired. Uh, Israel's famous better than a Kit Kat okay. caramel wafer. Okay. Well, it's a little. It's so we're in Florida. Oh, no. Okay. Here so you go. it's a little melty. Uh, I was I was waiting for some of this. Okay. In the Old Testament, God refer God refers to Israel as the land of flowing flowing with milk and honey. Uh, if these two yums are any contradiction, that's a spot on description. Take this famous Israeli candy bar. The thing we can't pronounce. The pesky Z-Man. Yeah. Hey, pretty good. Uh, between the white chocolate top and milk chocolate bottom, right above the crispy and caramely wafers, flow two thick layers of luxurious milk cream. It's no wonder this thing translates to time out. Milk cream. Milk cream. Uh, you'll want to drop everything else to milk every rich bite from this yum for as long as you possibly can. 
I'm, I don't think Tim's mature enough to try the SKZ man. <laughs> All right. All right, we've got some. So, oh, Chris said asphalt. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> Anne says she is disappointed at how pleasant these stacks. You know what? You know what? We can't suffer all the time, okay? Once in a while, it's nice to have a good box. I'm excited. I'm sorry I haven't submitted myself to eating garbage tonight. I just, I can't even with you people right now. Right. <laughs> so I saw the black stuff. Where's the, where's the pain? I'm sorry. I'm bringing the pain! <laughs> But we, first, I'm gonna eat this white chocolate bar. My fingers is melted. Yeah. Through it. Oh my god, that's amazing. It's mine. You don't get any more. Wow, that is incredibly sweet. You want one? No. Sure. Um, no. I gave you a chance. That is incredibly sweet. Oh my god. You know the white lint truffles, the little Lindor truffles? My teeth hurt so good. <laughs> it, it's basically half a white chocolate truffle from Lindor. <laughs> and then the other half is like Kit Kat. You know what? I will I will put some hot sauce on these bugle knockoffs. It might actually give it some flavor. How about that? Mm. Where's Anne with her uh, hot sauces? Anne needs to stay at home with her damn <laughs> hot sauces. You stay over there. <laughs> no. Um, no, that was delightful. I don't even get to talk about it because you like took it away from us. Yeah, you don't get any more. <laughs> He's like, nothing to see here. Yeah, move along, yeah. move along. It is nice to have a good box once in a while. Dang, like France was awful. France was booty. So did anyone want this booty ass France box? No, I'm kidding. Well, we will we'll give it to somebody special. And yeah. you get in a France box. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm You can try all the onion chips you want. I want to watch you feed the France box to your child and view the disappointment on her face. <laughs> oh, it's a cookie. Oh, it's a sad cookie. Yeah. Don't you do that to my girl. <laughs> we'll do it to Alex instead. <laughs> Alex will try it. Okay. Oh, by the way, Fox did come with a yum bag. Uh, so you guys stay tuned because there could be some shit in here. You never know. All right, let's try something else. Here we go, babe. All right. What's it called? These are falafel flavored oh wheat God. snacks. Oh now, God. have you ever oh had Oh, my God. That sounds awful. Have you ever had falafel? Yes. You when know? did you have falafel? Because I've never had falafel. I've had falafel somewhere. You, you big fat liar. I you remember. were always with me. It was not... When have you had falafel? He has never had falafel. I can't he find has these. just decided in his mind that he doesn't like falafel. Let me help you find it. So right here. Oh, okay. This thing. This was the first thing we were supposed to try. It says start here. We don't do it. <laughs> Bisley falafel sticks. Israel's Famous fried chickpea balls in a snack. This is basically fried hummus. So we're not fans of hummus, guys. Falafel This is, might be your present. You might enjoy us with torturing ourselves. Falafel is a dish of deep fried balls. Yeah! Of ground chickpeas. Oh! Fava beans, onions, and spices. Fava beans. With a nice Chianti. Uh, it's okay, beautiful. these freak me out. I it, don't like how it's these beloved look. far and wide, Gretchen, from Israel to Egypt to India. So oh, much so, God. in fact, that each of these countries oh. claims to have invented it. They smell like a state fair. Due to the scant records, no one is 100% certain who truly first invented fry, uh, tried frying up falafel, but most scholars agree it originated in Egypt using frying techniques uh, uh, adopted from the Indians. It then spread to ancient port of Alexandria, to the land of modern-day Israel, where it's become an obsession. Not only do the Israelis consider it their national dish, but you, can, but you can't walk a city block without spotting or smelling fried pita stuff with popping, as popping hot, piping hot fritters. Words are hard. Popping hot fritters. Popping hot fritters. So what makes Israeli falafel unique? It's always made with chickpeas, not fava beans. Mm -mm. And the balls. No fava beans up in this bitch. And the balls are smaller in size. We don't want small balls. In the case of this snack version, the tasty falafel flavor comes from its itty bitty extra crunchy sticks. Itty bitty, teeny weeny, shriveled little extra crunchy sticks. Right. 
Okay, I think these smell funky. Ooh, what are they? I thought they were balls. Why do they look like that? <laughs> we ain't got no balls. This is what this family needs is more balls. So you can't just eat one. Like they mm, mm, okay. Smell the bag. No! Get it with. God. I feel like they look they like they smell like the, the they uh, look like Florida fried State. caterpillars. They they smell like the Florida State Fair. They look like dog food. They do look like dog food. And I think they, they, they look like when dog we, food. When we had a dog, I feel like this is what their his dog food looked like. Okay. This Okay. I, I don't know how I feel about this. Whole thing. The whole thing? Whole thing. Okay, ready? ready? Go. Go. We're not allowed to spit out, are we? Um. Let me see if I can just swallow it all. It tastes like. Why do I feel like it tastes like taco meat? Got, like it's it's like you got taco meat, burnt tortilla chips, and taco meat. You got like cumin in there, right? Here. Put some, put some in the. Oh, okay. Put some in that and eat it. Okay. They have. I Turn think your bugle into a taco. I. <laughs> <laughs> so they they have cumin in them, so they have like the taco meat flavor, but they also <laughs> kind of taste like burnt. The Rocky Mountain <laughs> Israel really oysters. oysters. That's what I mean. Um, they're very hard. They taste like corn chips that have been frying for too long, and so they're like really hard. Uh, yeah, you know what? They're, even though they're deep fried, they're not like oily. Well, I don't know. I, they I, are oily. Okay, I got I got a few crunches in, and then just swallowed it just to get it. Here. No, I'm more. not having any more. I did not like them. Try a couple more. No. Try just a few more. So I want you to taste the taco flavor. <laughs> Why would it taste like tacos? Taste it. Chew it and enjoy it and then tell me that it doesn't taste it. Keep chewing. There's like a taco meat flavor going on in there. Oh, you big baby, you act like it's the worst thing you ever eat. So they're not great. Listen, I'm not going to question what taco meat you've had lately. These would be really, you know, this would be really good. You know, I love to have, like, um, if I eat a bowl of chili, I like Fritos on my chili. I would put these on my chili. Farm and animals and chili. kill it with crackers. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeding her these these things, and she's not biting. Like, her 15-year-old her, her boy brain is not kicked in tonight. I'm sorry. It's actually a thing of mine that I tend to say all kinds of inappropriate shit. So, and it just comes out. So listen, being from Missouri, this goes back to Todd's statement about uh, uh, state fair. Being from Missouri, like the state fair. Yeah, it's exactly deep fried everything, farm animals, and shame. That's exactly when what we got doing. down to Florida. It was our first time at a state fair experiencing the fact that people like get blue ribbons for their pigs. And and other things like that. Yeah, we went to like the carnival. It was the first. We didn't go to yeah. like the show your. It was cow. the it was the first time we met friends. who were like, yeah, I I raised goats, and it's like, and I was like, really? Yeah. Can I come see them? I always thought that was like an old school like TV thing that just didn't exist. Anymore. We're city kids, y'all. Yeah. We 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 were city kids. Eat them like you like. <laughs> see, exactly. Eat them till you to, like them. To be fair, that's that's how dinner happens a lot too. Ask, ask me about the time that I made him eat Brussels sprouts every day for oh, a month because I was gosh. like, damn it, you're going to like them. Guys, I can't do Brussels yes, sprouts in any any fashion. Any fashion. You're going to eat them. They're good for you. Disgusting. Ya. They're good for you. All right. All right. The city of Beersheba Ooh. is the blank capital of the world. The city of Beersheba is the blank capital of the world. Is it poker? Ballet, fencing, or chess. The, the city of Beersheba okay. is the capital of the world for poker, ballet, fencing, or 
chess? I'm going to guess fencing. That's what I'm going to guess. Hmm. Okay. Chris says, if prepared properly, love them Brussels. Nah. Nah. He just can't. He's... If it looks like it could be healthy, it's very difficult. Yes. For being kids raised on hot dogs and chicken nuggets, it's very difficult. <laughs> we work on it. <laughs> the city of Beersheba is the capital of, is it poker, ballet, fencing, or chess? Uh, looks like we got one for ballet. <laughs> All right. Um, we're, we're seven. Here. Uh -huh. Yes, me too. I'm thinking it's fencing because I feel like ballet is like known, like Russia is known for ballet, the okay. Russian ballet, right? That's a thing. Okay. Poker, I feel like that's. Yeah, chess. That's chess would probably be somebody distinguished like the British. Okay. Poker, that's America. It's very stereotypical. Well, right that's all I know. It's okay. a stereotype. Keep in mind, everything here has been surprising. I know. The Dead Sea produces I asphalt. Know. Who would have freaking know? And they don't have Starbucks. I'm liking Israel and Israel more and more and more. They've got relatively decent snacks. They don't have a Starbucks. And um, you and, get all the asphalt you want out right? of the Red Sea. So it's pretty nice. She, let's see here. Fencing. Uh, deep fry the Brussels sprouts, just like at the state fair. <laughs> covered, it, covered in uh, dough. That's right. right. One time I ate a brick of cheese, y'all. Fried, fried cheese. <laughs> It was just a ooey gooey. It was like an eight brick ounce of brick of cheese. It was glorious. Yeah. All right. So, Beersheba is the capital okay. of of uh, thanks to the influx of chess playing immigrants. What from the USSR, the city of Beersheba became the certified chess hub. In addition to being Israel's national chess center, it's now home to more chess grandmasters per capita than any other city in the world. See, I'm an asshole. What can I say? There you go. All right. Well, that's good to know. Stereotyping. Uh, well. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am. <laughs> On a daily basis. I'm ashamed day. of myself. Thank Wake you. up. Here I am. Being right. ashamed of myself. What do you got? TikTok. TikTok. Show them the band. All right. Chili lemon corn puffs. They like their corn puffs in, in uh, Israel, don't they? This spicy sour combo you didn't know you needed. Spicy and sour? Yeah. Oh. I don't time, like sour stuff. Time for TikTok? No, not TikTok. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's so bad. TikTok. That's the brand behind these hot and sour lemon chili puffs. God. They look like jacked up hot fries. And while that flavor might not sound like something you'd find on your TikTok feed, stop, stop it already. Jeez. Why? I want to find out who the writers are for the yeah. Universal Yums. Well, let's say hip kid things. TikTok, guys. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, with some unsuspecting person popping one in their mouth and busting into the spiciness fuel dance, we've got good news. It's really not that intense. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not that. Don't worry, Grandpa. I won't hurt you. TikTok, calm down. Oh my God. Okay, I'm done with it. So, what flavor is this? This is hot and sour. <laughs> hot and sour. Grab you some chips. It's it's hot and sour flavor. Yeah, hot and sour flavor. I don't know what texture these are, but I think you can't just eat one. Oh, they smell gross. Did you smell them? They do. They smell like, um, well, they also smell like. They also smell fried. They also just smell like fried. They smell like fried. Okay, ready? No, hold on. Maybe these will taste like tacos too. <laughs> okay. Maybe these will taste like guacamole and then you can mix it with the tacos and they'll be delicious. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that texture is effing awful. <laughs> oh, oh, it just kind of keeps dissolving. Oh, no, no, no. Um, they're squishy. They're they're like squishy and 
that texture is so off-putting. Um, I can't even put into words how bad these are. Um, okay. So there's okay. Imagine if you will, <laughs> Lawn John Silvers. Okay, y'all know Lawn John Silvers. You know when you buy a piece of fish from Lawn John Silvers, it comes with those like yummy, crunchy, crackling things. Yeah. Okay, so imagine if you will, undercooked. You've got some that are slightly undercooked and cold. Yeah. With a chili lime seasoning uh, on it. Mm. Also, it, I got more sour out of that than I did spicy. These are terrible. These are awful. Let me see if I can. Let's see here. Let me get Tick, it. Tick Tuck can suck it. There, um, no, maybe there, maybe it's the moisture in our mouth that kind of rubberizes them because they're kind of crispy here. Yeah, they're not crispy when you put them in your mouth. They're like chewy. I mean, I'm going to try a couple more. I'm going to try again. I'm going to give it a second bite. And sometimes things get a little less shitty in the second bite, right? It's anti-enticing. It, they're hard till you put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> these old ass car french fries can suck it i can't do these fact fact i mean if you believe hard enough you can convince yourself anything tastes like tacos if you believe they'll taste like tacos <clears throat> um these are that is the worst that is god the awful. worst these are god awful um they're squishy and chewy and there's no crunch to they them. They have xanthan gum in them. Okay. Well, that's just a, that's like a cornstarch or oh, is thickening it? agent. Yeah. Malic acid. Oh. <laughs> a lot of malic acid in that one. There's a lot of malic acid in that one. Wow. Those are no bueno. Those are, those are the worst so far. They just kind of sticks with you, doesn't it? Behind these uh, falafel. Give me one of them taco sticks. Falafel taco Give sticks. Give me one of these what? taco sticks. I was looking at the tacos. What you're talking about? I had to get that shit out of my mouth. <laughs> yes. All right. I was bad. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Multiple choice again. Okay. An Israeli scientist grew this. An Israeli scientist grew. Okay. Was it an extinct date plant? Okay. A 50 foot tall olive tree. A 1,000 foot tomato vine Ooh. or a 25 pound potato. So, a scientist brought back an, um, some sort of a scientist did, extinct plant of some a sort. A scientist did some sort or, of herbological did thing. Did some sciencey stuff. Did he bring back a date plant, an extinct date plant? A, did he grow a 50 foot tall olive tree? Uh, grow a 1,000 foot long tomato vine? Or grow a 25 pound potato. That's a hell of a potato. I'm going to say he brought back the extinct date plant. Okay. I love dates. You don't see those as much. Unless you go to the bougie grocery store. Okay. I'm going to say the date plant. Anne says potato. potato. 25 pound potato. Todd agrees with me with the date plant. Date plant. Okay. I think it's the date plant. That's right. my guess. Um, uh, Swanee says potato. Okay. All right. So we got, uh, we got two potatoes, two date plants. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, I will agree that 50% of you were correct. Ooh. All right. Todd, I don't know how I got in your head, but I'm staying there because it makes me feel smart. In 2005, scientist Elaine Soloway resurrected an extinct date plant from a 2000 year old seed uncovered in a jar in the fortress of Masadra. That's amazing. Masada, uh, dubbed Methuselah after the longest living person in the Bible. The plant is now over 10 feet tall and produces viable pollen, meaning you can eat dates with the same DNA of those that grew up uh, before Jesus's time. That's really cool. 2,000 years old. That is amazing. It's got that the same DNA from 2,000 years old. From they were able years to, to... The plants are fascinating. That's incredible. That's awesome. Okay. 
We have one more uh, multiple choice coming up here soon, but okay. we'll try one of these things. So we have two things left. We have this and we have our yum bag. Well, let's so do, we can do the yum bag last. Yeah, do the yum bag last. So we're going to do this thing. Popping, or wait, milk chocolate mm. with popping candies. Elite milk chocolate bar with popping candies. Uh, chocolate with Pop Rocks? Nope. It's not a mirage. Nope, it's not a mirage. But let's start at the beginning. In 1936, when Richard and Hildy Strauss opened a dairy farm with just two cows. Just two cows? Note the two cows on the wrapper. After two years of cheese making. Um, I only see one cow on the wrapper. What? It literally says, note the two cows. There's one cow on the wrapper. After two Maybe they're standing next to each other. After two years of cheese making, the couple tried making chocolate with incredible success. In fact, their son Michael soon went from delivering milk in a donkey-drawn cart to leading the largest food manufacturer in Israel. So, so yeah. we live in Florida. Things don't always come as pretty as when they leave. So chocolate uh, is a little funky looking. We're going to eat it anyway because you yeah. eat the chocolate anyway. Yeah. It's just not as, uh... Todd said Methuselah is his death metal stage name. Okay. Because I'm old and my back hurts. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so all of, I call BS on this all of a sudden because there is no two cows. And they made a point to point out two cows. And I don't see two cows on here. Okay. So I, I, I question their ability to make me happy. Listen, I'm going to be real. I've not had a milk chocolate bar that just didn't taste like any other milk chocolate bar. There's nothing special about a milk it, chocolate it bar. It smells just like any other it milk chocolate like, bar. Smells like a chocolate bar. Could it be, could it be a Hershey's? Oh, wait, does it have Pop Rocks? Is that what they said? He's, I think it said Popping Candy, right? Popping Candy, but not Pop Rocks. Pop Rocks? Nope. It's not a Mirage. I don't get what that means. Okay. Okay. Let's try it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh my God. That's pretty cool. My mouth is having a party. Oh, I never had like actual popping pop rocks. It's kind of aggressive. That's really cool. It's going to pop my will to live. There's a lot There's a lot going on there. Like the chocolate is making it stick to in the juice. It keeps, just keeps popping. Yeah, it just keeps going. It's like there's no more chocolate and I'm still popping. This is amazing. Okay. Not two cows. One cow. This is incredible. I I love this. This is kind of fun. Why do Americans not have anything like this? I that's because we're grown ass adults and we're excited about having it's still popping. I mean, it I is. Have, I don't even know what's popping, but something's popping. It should be concerned. That was wild. That's we, cool. We only eat half of it. Not even. We'll have the Man. rest. We'll have the rest in a little while. I am stoked to have more of that. This is really yummy. First of all, it's good chocolate. Yeah. It's a good chocolate. But yeah, it's a it's a, a milk chocolate. I feel like it's a higher quality milk chocolate. It's a good quality milk chocolate. The pop rocks do not add too much texture. No. It's, it's, kind it's of just like, a weird effect while you're enjoying the chocolate. And then it's like it sparkles in your mouth. Yeah. It's like, mouth sparkly. I still feel it. Like I can still, still hear it in stuff. my in, yeah. My mouth sparkly is doing stuff. Okay. Uh okay. Our last multiple choice. Okay. <laughs> Chibani flips have yogurt with popping candy. Are you serious? Is that are you being <laughs> I don't know if Chris is ever being serious. So that's Oh, the, they have that. We do just they? we just don't get it because there's a lot of sugar in it. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, they have those. All right. Caesar, yummy. Caesar Ray, Caesar Ray, Caesar like, Ray. like Caesar with an EA on the end. Okay. C Caesar Ray uh, is home to the world's first blank museum. Oh, Caesar Ray is the name of the, of the town. I will say yes. Okay. Caesar Ray is the home of the world's first blank museum. Okay. All right. So we have 
Is it a virtual reality museum? Hmm. Is it a treehouse museum? That would be cool. An underwater museum? Ooh. Or an airborne museum? I would love to go to a treehouse museum. That sounds like fun. Would it be just like a museum in a treehouse? I would. I or would, a museum about treehouses. I would be like loving it if it was like a museum that featured how like treehouses have grown to be so freaking awesome that they are now. Like these people build these epic treehouses, but they. Started, I mean, they made a whole TV show about it. Right. I. I don't know how that would be a museum. But I would like to go see tree houses. Right. That's really what it comes down to. Okay, so let's 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 not do that one. Um so I would say the underwater museum. That's my guess. Caesarea. Caesarea. Rhea. I like I like that Dave, the teacher, is Caesarea. correcting us on our link. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. I appreciate it. Caesar Ray. I did I did say Caesar Ray. Caesarea. 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 That's why nobody knows what we're talking about. Right. Because so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me correct. Down. It's Caesarea. Now you know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I see. I was confused. So, yes, I'm going to say it was the, the obviously, the underwater museum. Oh, okay. Because That's, now you know the actual city. Because I know what you're talking about. No. Nah, oh, my bad. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So far be it for me to sound like an ass on a regular basis. Well, you do, but that's okay because I also sound like an ass and we can be asses together. Okay. All right. So, okay. With over 200 museums, that's a lot of museums. Uh, Israel boasts the world's most museums per capita. None more exciting than the Herod's Harbor. Donning wetsuits and carrying waterproof maps, visitors dive underwater to explore lighthouses, anchors, and pedestals that's cool from one of the greatest ports from the roman empire constructed back in 10 bc so you like snorkel and yeah that's cool so it's not like a like a like a underwater aquarium like a disney world where they're all around you you actually are jumping in the water and, and yeah that was that sounds like that's fun. pretty awesome that's pretty awesome i'm always fascinated mm. by the underwater statues and stuff that people pick in, in yeah like south america yeah and stuff. That's always yeah cool. all right we got the yum bag so i'm always apprehensive about anything that comes out of a thing called a yum bag. ever since we got that uh what was that stuff called the, the um that weird taffy yeah oh i think it's actually sitting over there like that milk taffy stuff what was it called the salted caramel from france that sucked well no no it um the, the stuff that I was like, I took a bite of it. I'm like, oh, you got to have this. And you took a bite. And you're like, oh, this is awful. I don't know. That's been many things. No, yeah, yeah that's true. Um, so these things lately have kind of been filled, filled with kind of the same thing. You know, maybe, maybe some um, um, Laffy Taffy sort of stuff or some Jolly Rancher kind of candy. So we got two different kinds of candies. All right. So you have the strawberry banana swirl soft candies. Okay. Or you have the grape toffee sticks. Okay, so this is what these look like. Let's do these first. Strawberry banana swirl soft candies. After Arabs brought banana over from India, the Jews of the Middle Ages embraced the fruit. But they embraced the fruit. But they had one question: Are they really even fruit? Dun dun dun! The designation was important as the blessing for fruit was different from the blessing from herbs and vegetables. Interesting. Finally, in the 16th century, in the city of Safed, uh, Rabbi Joseph Caro officially declared bananas as fruits. Bananas are hereby known as oh, fruits. It's squishy. So it's kind of a gummy. It's squishy and it's uh, kind of sugar sugar covered. Kind of reminds me of those orange slices. I already showed them. You just weren't paying attention. No, sorry. That's okay. All I right. think you just like to show too. And then you like to yell at me because I you show them, show them, and then you show them. Show them. Okay. And, say, <laughs> and this is how you really show and them. And this is how you really show them. <laughs> okay. Ready? All right. Go. Um. Go. Maybe. Well, right. They're so, not terrible. Mine had like this tartness to it. That's like, it's that artificial like, strawberry and artificial banana yeah. put together. Okay. So both of those have like that weird 
citric acid. Okay. It had a, kind of like a bite to it. The it, was a, it was a gummy, like kind of like the orange slices. Not like the orange slices. Like They're very jellyfied. Yeah. These are yummy. These are definitely old lady candy dish candies. Gretchen, do you want the candy? That's that's what you would have. Okay. But I'm not mad about them. Like if, if somebody's grandma asked me if I want a piece of candy and I saw these, I'd be like, thanks. Okay. Cool. I'll eat this. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Does that it was okay. It, uh, it wasn't offensive. I could take it or leave it. I mean the the flavor I know. the flavor was good. The tartness kind of put me off a little bit. Right. They're like Israeli and Werther's original. <laughs> Every old person's got it in their pocket. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So next are the grape toffee sticks. Okay. The humble grape. There are no better symbol of Israel's How past. How is the grape humble? Ah, oh, the humble grape. <laughs> <laughs> There are what no, does that even mean? no better symbol of Israel's past and present. Ancient locals ate grapes all the time, either in wine or right from the vine, as they're one of seven species listed in the Hebrew Bible as being special to Israel. And now modern Israelis have mastered the art of growing grapes using high-tech drip irrigation of their own design, which can transform the scorching Negev desert into a lush vineyard oasis. Oh, it's so sad. It's, it's humble, Gretchen. It's humble. <laughs> it's humble, okay? I can feel its humility. Yes. <laughs> okay, here's our humble grape. It's kind of like a Laffy Taffy. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. All right, I'm going to swirl mine together. I'm going to ball mine up. Ball it up. It, it matches it, my hair. Yeah, so there's that. It's just, it probably it, tastes like that. It's just like a laugh, okay. Gabby. It tastes like everybody's above me. It made you humble? I... Mm hmm. I feel very humble it's, right now. It's, it's just grape taffy. Mm. It does stick with you for a while. As the last thing in the box, that was kind of a letdown. We should have started with this and then went with the old people swirly candy. Next time, we, next time we're going to start with the yum bag. Do the yum bag first. Yeah. See, sometimes the yum bag's iffy though. All right. Well, okay. this was good. So, what is your favorite so far? So we have every mm. every um. So as usual, that that was my favorite. Every so far. every Universal Yums box comes with a little rating chart. So we will after the live stream, we will eat all of this and we will write our thoughts down and post it on our Instagram. We will put it over on our Instagram um, right here. There we are. So if you want to see our thoughts on this, you go check us out on Instagram. Give us a follow while you're over there, and. Um, I have some thoughts. I'm, 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 I'm thinking on these because these are, this was actually, in my opinion, one of the better boxes that we've received for a long time. There was a lot of stinkers in some of them boxes. This one, I think, had more yummy stuff than it had not yummy stuff. Does that make sense? Is it sticking with you? No, I can't get it out of my mouth. Are you stuck with the grape? I am. I've got so much grape. If you guys stuck around this long, we truly appreciate Give us it. A thumbs up. We yeah. really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and chatting. It is the highlight of our week. It, that's not that's not even just us saying that is. it really is. Like it's why we do it on Monday. Because despite the Monday that we have, we can always sit here and do we this. Can, we can create our the rest of the week to be the way we want with set the vibe here right. Monday night. So Absolutely. we really appreciate that. If you enjoyed watching our show today, our show, our channel, our live stream, <laughs> whatever we're doing, um, consider subscribing to our channel it is completely free you just hit the little subscribe button and the thumbs up and you can actually hit a notification bell and it'll let you know every time we post a video so Absolutely. that's always Which exciting is every monday every monday actually you know we were supposed to go to disney for easter yesterday yeah we had we had reservations for skipper's cantina um but we opted not to we opted to avoid people avoid the hectic i was tired y'all i wanted to stay home I was, was working hard. 
she was working like 12 hour days at the bakery to be ready for the restaurants and personal orders and everything like that at the bakery. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, work week was just BS. It's why my boss called off on Friday. So we so stay home. We didn't go to Disney. We're like, let's just chill, do nothing. So I don't have an Easter video for you guys this year. No. We, Cause we didn't do anything. So we'll be back here next week with a live stream. We have stuff to unbox. We have a band box and we've got some got other, lots of stuff other for things you. I've been waiting for. Plus, to. you know, I really actually, I love doing the videos and we're never going to stop doing that. But I enjoy doing the live stream with our friends because I yeah. feel like it gets us an ability to connect with people we know who come and visit us, but also a lot of new friends. And I've met a lot of really amazing people just chatting on our live stream. So this is close to my heart and I can talk to my friends and I like that. Does the grape stuff match? Does it match your hair? It does match my hair. All right, I'll open another one so you can see. Holy crap, it does. Wow. So that's a little scary. I guess if I was going to get my hair stuck with candy, this would be the one to hide it best. No kidding. That would be the one. So, uh, guys, I will be at uh, Suncoast Comic Con next weekend. If you guys are in the Bradenton area of Florida, please come down and check it out. The con is, uh, it was actually my first con ever that I, that I tabled at last year. So uh, I'm excited to be back there again this year. But Absolutely. in the meantime, you can check out my uh, website and my shop on tvrworks.com. Absolutely. I am foregoing the Etsy thing. Uh, the Etsy shop is now open. And if you feel better buying from Etsy, it's okay to do so. But just know that the Etsy shop will no longer be updated. And if things run out on that, on the Etsy, then they've run out. We, we're going to keep up with TVRworks.com. Come check us out there. there That's a better place for you to go. And um, so there's that. Oh. What else are you going to show? Gonna show go. Ah, right. yes. My Etsy is actually getting ready to open back up. So if you felt so inclined, I do custom tumblers. I do all kinds of macabre, goth artwork, that kind of stuff. You always check me out. On Instagram, I do take custom orders. You can contact me directly if you like, and I'm happy to chat with you about that. Uh, recently, I uh, just put up a new TikTok. New we're, TikTok. We, we are Tiki Talkers, we're, like, you know, like these guys. Tick TikToking. We're TikToking. We're TikToking. Tick like right. this shit. Right. Uh, uh, but if you guys uh, go check out that TikTok and you're interested in seeing more, uh, it was about Gretchen's birthday, her amazing birthday that we had at Epcot. Yes. And uh, you can also follow us on, I don't have a link here, you can follow us on Twitter as well. I've been using the Twitters more often uh, under Marvelous TNG. And uh, let's see here, I'm uh, going here, and these are individual Instagrams. Yep, I post a lot of stuff about my baking, my plants, my household, like things like that. And you I do post a lot of stuff. artwork, so, so if you like cool art or you want to see me rant about my job, come visit there us on go, our right? Insta stories. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we are going to get out of here. We've been taking up your time for an hour and a half now. So we will be back next Monday with an unboxing of some sort. We're going to open up some mail, folks. That's right. So we will see you then, guys. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you soon.